Hello, my name is Anna Kena Schofield and this is my novel Malarkey and I'm going to read um, another short extract from episode 7. In this episode, uh, Jimmy, who is the son of the main character in the novel, Our Woman, uh, has bought a male lover to the farm in rural Ireland, in Mayo, to visit them. I was shocked. Shocked for his father's sake. I liked the fella, and then I didn't like him. I want you to get a look at him. He was stringy looking, tall with a mop of curly hair. He was a quiet man. It wasn't that I expected he'd bring a man waving pom-poms, but this fella was way too up in his head, and it was not what Joni said about the gays. See, he asked very few questions, so he did. I wish he'd asked more. We couldn't be sure at first why Jimmy brought him to us. That night my husband spoke to me in bed, which was rare. Usually he either reached for me or he didn't. As he'd say himself, I don't get into bed to get into a heated debate. If I want that, I'll turn on the radio where there's people, plenty of people with nothing to do but talk all day. Well, himself said, there's something fishy about that fella. He's awful quiet. Aye. I never usually said I. We were both beside ourselves. He's a quiet man. Why has he brought him here? Perhaps he thinks he's a nice man. A nice man for us to meet. We don't meet many men. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I want him gone. And I want no fuss made. You've to get rid of him. For a man who wanted no fuss, he'd a strange way of going about it. At the breakfast table, he stopped talking, to him, the stringy one, and to all of us. And when he left to go down the field, Jimmy raised his hands, palms up at me, inquiringly. I don't think he's well. It was a pure lie, but the only way to get rid of the two men was to invoke a set of circumstances where no person would stay. He might have cancer. Maybe it is that he's the cancer, I said. I had the idea to say it because in the church listings at the back of the newsletter, prayers were offered for a man out Balway, who'd the cancer of the prostate. It might be in his prostate, I said. We don't know yet. The two of them looked mighty uncomfortable. I'd mulled the whole thing over. I was not telling a lie. After all, I had no exact science on what was happening in this man or any man's prostate, and it could have been full of mercury for all I knew. Had he been to the doctor? That was Jimmy. Immediately sceptical, immediately practical Jimmy. I don't know, I said. Sure, he never tells me anything. Good and timely, the stringy but quiet, watery man said, We'll go. We don't want to be a burden at a time like this. I could have nearly thrown my arms around him. If you could get the two o'clock train, it might be as well. I said it politely, trying to hide my pleasure. But basically, I wanted the whole thing sewn up before my husband came back for lunch. I wanted them gone. I didn't want to sit through another lunch. Sure, you'll be down again soon once all this is, this is all past. I said it the way mammies say such things. The verbal sweep of the hand. Gentle feathers duster smack to the back of the head. Jimmy knew it was a lie. I could tell by him. He went for the two o'clock train, but he didn't go easy. Slipped into the bathroom. Slipped him into the bathroom. The two of them to get back at me. And if you could see the size of it. Small enough to topple over in with one man in it. Never mind two. Two. And the Lord save us. How I paced up and down the kitchen worrying if someone would come to the door, come in for the tea come in for tea and need to use the toilet and how would I explain the sight of the two of them coming out and the what on earth question in the in their eyes of who is your man with Jimmy? Twice I went to the bathroom door and once I spoke. Are you in there, Jimmy? I am. Will you be long? Why? And I couldn't answer him. I couldn't tell him the truth. For the love of God, get that man and his watery smile and his leather jacket out of there or we'll never hear the end of it. I'm feeling a bit of an urgency, a bit of an urgency to go, like, you know, I might have a spot of diarrhoea coming on. It was ridiculous. 
but I had to get them out. You understand? The other fella answered. We'll be about ten minutes, he shouted. And I found that awful bold of him. Sure, in ten minutes, if what I proposed were actually true, it'd be running down the hall. I was tempted to call into them. Don't mind me. I just sit on a bucket. But I held back. They were going. That they would not come out of the bathroom was minor. I decided if anyone came to the back door before admitting them, I would say, just to let you know, the toilet facilities are out of order. Thank you.